Hello, welcome to Questpons YouTube channel and today's topic is around four vocabularies which are very confusing for IT developers. The first one is concurrency, the second one is parallelism, third one is asynchronous and the last one is threats. So all these four vocabularies, they look very, very similar and many times, you know, developers think that they are synonyms and that ends into a bad design. So this is like, you know, approximately on one hour of video and I've divided this video into two parts. In the first part, I will discuss concurrency versus parallelism. And in the second part, I will talk about asynchronous versus thread. And both of these videos I'm uploading on this channel itself, right? So this is part one, concurrency versus parallelism. And in the same channel, I will be uploading asynchronous versus threads. And if you get a time, if you get a chance, please go and visit my questpond.com website, you know, where I, I explain complex IT things in a simplified way. If you see around, a lot of developers have confusion around concurrency and parallelism. And many developers think that concurrency and parallelism means one and the same thing. So for many developers, concurrency and parallelism means that executing multiple tasks at the same time. Now this definition is 50% right, but 50% we need to add more to it. So let us go in more detail. Concurrency means executing multiple tasks on the same core, while parallelism means executing multiple tasks on multiple hardwares. Now this can be multiple cores, they can be multiple machines or whatever. So concurrency means you have two tasks, you know, but they execute on the same core. For example, you can see over here in this image, we have this one core and we have two tasks here, T1 and T2. So what the core does is, the single core does is, it actually gives some time to T1 and then it context switches. That means it switches to T2, then executes some part of T2 and again context switches to T1. While when you talk about parallelism, they are executing on different hardwares, you know, which can be separate cores or separate machines. So they just run parallel and uh, just execute as fast as possible. So we can also conclude that concurrency is a feel of parallelism, while parallelism is real parallelism. So in concurrency, we just have time slicing. Time slicing means some time is given to T1 and then switched and then some time is given to T2. So basically here we have time slicing here there are context switches, while in case of parallelism, there are no context switches. Now the next question comes is, do we need to get educated or be aware of these terms separately? Because if it is just about executing on single core or multiple core, we would like to always execute on multiple core. Because if we execute parallelly, we are utilizing our cores, we are utilizing our resources properly, we are having good, good performance. So why do we really need to worry about that we are, we are running on a single core or we are running on multiple core? Why don't we just run on multiple cores? Now, we should be aware that the, that the, that the goals of both concurrency and parallelism are very different. And if you mix up these goals, you will have a bad design or an over design. The goal of concurrency is to have a non-blocking application, is to have a usable application. Your application should not hang. So for example, if you have something running at the background, that should not really affect how the end user is using your application, right? So here it is more about to make your application usable, but it is not about performance. You, you do not intend to make your application faster. You just want to make your application usable. So that is the, that is the goal of concurrency. The goal of uh, parallelism is performance. You just want to complete the task as fast as possible. You want to utilize your hardware. You want to go rocket fast. So one is all about making your application usable, non-blocking. It should not hang. And the other is all about performance. And if you mix both of them, then you have an over design or you have a bad design. So let me explain you. So here is a simple C sharp code I have. And this simple C sharp code out here is doing a couple of things. So it's a console application and in this, uh, assume that there is some task out there, you know, probably like downloading of a file which is happening. So you can see that this first line of code here is orchestrating. I'm using that word very purposely orchestrating. It is orchestrating a download of file one. So you can see that I've used a task.delay to just make the application wait here for 10 seconds. Again, there is some file two which is getting downloaded. So again, that I have 
orchestrated by this task.delay. And finally, the end user can also go and input some data into the application. So basically, uh, there are three things which is happening, downloading of file one, downloading of file two, and then entering of data into the application. So if I run this application, you can see the first thing what really happens is the downloading of file one starts. So there is a 10 second of delay, the downloading of file one will start, then downloading of file two will finish. And afterwards, you know, the end user gets the data entry screen. Now tell me, how good is this? I mean, like the end user has to wait for like 20 seconds to get the data entry screen. So that makes the application not so user friendly. That makes your application blocking. So now you want to make your application more user friendly. You want to make it usable. You want to go and break down those downloading of files into separate computation units and you want to run them on the background. But at this moment in your mind, you do not have performance in your mind. You do not think that your application has to perform better. What you are thinking is that how to make it this user friendly, how to ensure that the end user gets the data entry screen as soon as possible rather than waiting for the file files to download. So at this moment in your mind, it is not that you want to run things parallelly on different hardwares and different machines and different cores, but it is just to ensure that if you can run all these three tasks concurrently, right? So if in your mind somewhere you have that performance is not the criteria, but more it is about usability, it is more about not making your application blocking, then it is concurrency what you have in your mind, right? So basically now what you will do out here is you will actually go and put all these three, three things into separate units. So one of the base thing, uh, things about concurrency is that you need to go and design how you think your concurrency will work. So you need to go and divide your application into individual components or individual com computation units, you know, which you want to run concurrently. So at this moment, you know, I can think about three units. I, I would like to go and run this download file one separately, concurrently at the background. I would like to run the downloading of file two concurrently, and then the entering of the data can happen concurrently. But in my mind, I do not have at this moment this thought that I want to run this on a separate processor. I want to run this on a separate computer. I don't have that in my mind. My mind, in my mind, I have that I want to make this application usable, right? So let us go ahead and put this into one method. So I'm going to go and uh, quickly refactor this and let's extract this into one method. So that's, you can see that I've just created a new method and let's Go and again extract this as well. So this code also I would like to go and uh, put into a separate method, right? So you can see I've created uh, two methods out here, uh, method one and method two. So now what I would like to do is I would like to go and uh, run this new method one concurrently. I would I would like to run new method two, new method concurrently, new method one concurrently, and this concurrently. So at this moment, what I've done is I have done some small software design at the at the background, I have divided my application into three individual computation units, and I want to run them parallelly. And I want to ensure that the end user can use my application properly. So now you can see that we have divided our application into individual logical units into individual computations, but still, you know, they are running synchronously. In other words, first the new method will run, then new method one, one will run. So in other words, even though if I run my application at this moment, uh, you will see that it is still doing the same behavior. It is first waiting for 10 seconds, then again waiting for 10 seconds. So we have achieved the first goal of uh, recognizing those individual computation units, but we are still not running them concurrently, right? So in, in C Sharp, you know, if you want to run something concurrently, or I'll say asynchronously, I will come to this keyword asynchronously later on because I don't want to bombard you with a lot of things. So if I want to run this new method and new method one at the background, you know, in C Sharp, we have something called as a sync keyword. So we can go and we can put here a sync and we can say that wait for this task to finish. You can see that, you know, I'm not trying to create threads here. You know, I, I have not said new thread. I did not do that because I'm not in a mood to run parallelly. I do not want to run parallelly. Performance is not my goal. My goal is usability. So you can see that how carefully I'm not using those 
thread x is equal to new thread. I'm not using the thread syntax. I'm not using TPL, but I'm using a sync and await because my intention here is to run things at the background, but I don't want to create a lot of threads. So I can say here await, right? So now let us see. Now if you see here, uh, and now let us go ahead and run this application. So basically I have used async and await. In case uh, you, 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 you do not have an idea of async and await, I would suggest you go and see this video, you know, where I've explained what exactly is this keyword async and await. So I will go and run this now. So the, you can see now, first thing is it's, it's popping up the end user screen saying that enter your name. So I can go and enter my name out here. And at the background, the downloads of both of the files are happening. So this is more usable application now, right? So you can see I did not run on multiple processors, but I made my application more usable, right? And if you go and see internally, for example, if I go and see out here, if I run this, and if you go and just see debug windows, and if you just see the threads what are running at the background, you would see that there is only one thread which is running, you can see the main thread. So you can see that he has not created a lot of threads. It's just one thread which is actually doing time slicing. So sometime he's giving to this, sometime he's giving to this. It is giving to the end user the feeling of concurrency, the feeling of parallelism. It is beating those um, the, the psychological behavior of the end user. But at the same time, I'm not stressing out my resources. I'm not stressing out my course. So ask yourself one question that do you intend performance or do you intend usability, non-blocking? So if you're intending non-blocking, concurrency. If you're intending perf performance, it is parallelism. Now, because you have done some good deeds out here, you have divided your application into individual computation units, uh, you get some bonus here. The bonus here is that you can take the same individual computation agents or individual computation units and you can run them on parallel. In other words, I can go out here and I can say something like this. I can do something like this. I can take these individual units. For example, this is new method. I can go and I can run it on a separate thread or on a separate task. So in .NET, you know, we have something called as a task parallel library, which actually helps you to uh, take a logic and run on parallel processors, you know, so it, so you can see here, I'm just running these individual units now parallelly, right? So here, if you see at this moment, I should have three threads, one thread, which will, which is the main thread, the another thread, which will run this new method and the another thread, which will run new method one. So if I go and debug this, you can, you should see out here, if you see, you can see that, um, there are two or three more worker threads out here. I know why, because uh, at this moment, I am thinking about parallelism. So the bonus out here is that because you have divided these uh, application into individual units, you do get a bonus of running them parallelly. But please note that in your first place, when you started designing concurrency, you never thought about this. So uh, it is also possible that these individual computation units can be a bad choice to run parallelly because in concurrency normally these individual computation units you know talk with each other directly they, they they share common data they throw events to each other there is a communication which happens right and when you say you want to run something parallelly and if you are if you are having these two tasks communicating too much with each other if the if if they are chatty then it is possible that you won't achieve the performance in parallelism when you talk about parallelism they should not talk with each other. They should just run like a horse and not communicate with each other directly. So every concurrent application is probably not a good choice to make it parallel. For a parallel application, you need to think differently. You need to think isolated. So this is just a bonus. For this, you did not make your application concurrent. So please note, it is possible it is possible that you can take up on concurrent application, you can run it parallelly, but also there is a small if and but here. It is possible that if those tasks are very chatty with each other, then the parallelism would not benefit into performance. Also, one more important part about concurrency is that it is undeterministic. In other words, when you run a concurrent application first time, 
you can get a different sequence of output. And if you run the same concurrent application next time, it is probable that you'll get a different sequence of output. Why? Because your core is actually doing context switching. So it is giving some time to one task. It is giving some time to other task. And then it is possible that uh, depending on the mood of the core, when I say mood of the core means depending on whatever is the situation, the core can decide that he can give some time, some more time to one task and less time to another task. And uh, it is possible that you will get a different sequence of output. For example, over here, if you see in this code, I'm first calling new method. So logically, file one should download first. Then I'm calling new method one. So must be file two should download first, right? Uh, but it is possible. Let me run this. It's now I've just increased the time to 20 seconds, you know, uh, for various reasons, I've increased to 20 seconds. So uh, it is possible that file two can finish first, even though file one downloading started first, but file two can finish first. So let us wait and see uh, what happens. Uh, I've just changed the time, you know, because I just want to play around with the core and simulate that situation. There it is. You can see now, can you see um, that file two has downloaded first and file one is downloaded later on. So concurrent applications are undeterministic. The final output is proper. Please note the final output. What you expect is there, but the, the sequence of working can be different. So that's one of the biggest characteristic of a concurrent application. When you talk about parallel application, it is deterministic. Why? Because they are sitting on a single core. They are, they are using the hardware exclusively. So you can determine, you know, what can, you know, how the output can be at the end, right? Or you can have the same output again and again. Why? Because it is not chatting with a lot of other tasks. But here, you know, because the hardware is shared, it is possible that you will have an undeterministic output. So please keep that in mind as well. So with all the demos and all the theory, what we discussed, you know, let us put a conclusion sheet. So when you talk about the basic definition, both of them mean executing multiple tasks. But in case of concurrency, it means multi executing multiple tasks on the same core. While in case of parallelism, it means executing multiple tasks on different hardwares, which can be different cores or which can be different machines. So in other words, you know, concurrency is a field of parallelism. It uses the fundamental of time slicing. It does context switches. When you talk about the goal of concurrency, it is about making a program usable. It is about making a program non-blocking so that the end user can feel good about your program, right? While in case of parallelism, it is about performance. So you just want to increase your performance X times. When you talk about concurrency, the most important part is that how do you divide your application into individual computation units? How do they talk with each other, right? That's the most important part in case of concurrency. Uh, while in case of parallelism, it is about uh, just having parallel units and executing them on different hardwares. So the perspective of concurrency is more about software design. It is more about composing those individual units. Somebody will stop, somebody will send an event, the main thread will be non-blocking, how they communicate with each other. While parallelism is all about executing on X hardware. So you have four cores, you have four tasks, you execute parallelly. So here the, here the perspective is more hardware. And definitely, because here we are talking about more metal, it is heavy and this is lightweight because it runs on a single core. And other thing which I have already discussed in my past video is that concurrency, you know, the, the design what you make in concurrency must be it is not best suited for parallelism. It can only become a bonus. It, it can be a bonus that you can take a concurrent com composed individual units and you can run them in parallel, but uh, it, it was in, in the first place, it was never intended to run parallelly, right? For parallelism, you need to design your task completely decoupled and independent. Also, I would like to make one statement out here, you know, must be the statement you won't agree, but I feel personally that parallelism is a subset of concurrency. So concurrency is a bigger picture and parallelism is actually a subset of it. Also, I would like to end this discussion of concurrency and parallelism with a slide out here. You can see at the right hand side, you know, this is concurrency and this is parallelism. So at the right hand side, you can see that only one person is juggling the balls, is giving some time to one unit, some time to second unit, but he's not appointing one more person to do it, right? But if you at the left hand side, if you see, um, you know, a lot of people are working, they are having dedicated desk, they are having dedicated machines, they are having dedicated units, they are all different individuals and they are working towards uh, growing the company 
and performing better. So at the left hand side, the goal is more performance to do the things faster. At the right hand side, the goal is more about, you know, making you feel parallel, right? Making you feel as if, uh, you know, things are working parallel. So, and remember that if you, if you start thinking both of them as one thing, then you would end up in a bad design. So these two things have to be thought in a different perspective. If you don't think from a different perspective, your code will look very weird. Now, definitely how much ever I say here, whatever I talk here, how much ever I demonstrate at the end of the day, uh, there will be a certain group of developers who will not uh, um, agree to this. And I and and I, I do understand because these words look so synonym that people won't agree to it. But at the end of the day, we as a community have to come on a common ground around some vocabularies or else there will be a lot of confusion, right? So here are two more links, you know, which you can have a look. Uh, first link points towards Rob Pike's video where he discusses that how concurrency is all about design and parallelism is all about hardwares. The second link is a Stack Overflow link, you know, which uh, talks about, um, you know, how community uh, looks at both of these terms. So it's a very nice debate uh, which is happening out there. Must be you can go and read those comments. Uh, it can probably enlighten you further. So this brings us to the end of this part one video. Now in the part two video, we will talk about one more controversial uh, statement, you know, that asynchronous or asynchrony concept uses threads at the background. So that's a very misunderstood concept. And wh uh, why did I create part one and part two? Because concurrency is very much connected with asynchrony. So that's why I have kept uh, both of these video one after another. So let us start with part two does async use threads at the background so when you code a, a when you create a code which is asynchronous in nature does it mean that it has to create threads at the background thank you very much